Well, praise the Lord. Praise God for Jesus. We thank God for another opportunity, Lord, to give me to come and praise God, share the word of God with you. Once again, it is Wednesday. Praise God on this Wednesday, uh, 31st, the last, praise God, it is the last day of the month of January. And praise God, we just thank God for an opportunity uh, to come and share the word of God with you once again. Again, I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God once again. Um, as the four tops, I think, during the 60s, uh, uh, they had a song and it went something like, I think the title was the same old song, the same old song. And that's what we have here today. Praise God. Jesus is the answer. It is the same old song, praise God, but it is the answer to all the problems that we are facing today. If we would only put our trust in the Lord and allow him to work in and through us, praise God, hopefully to lead us into a closer uh, relationship with him. We have only to cooperate, but I hope and pray that you're ready to study God's word with me on this Wednesday. Generally, uh, in our churches, this is a... Uh, Bible study night here. Praise God. So now if you're not attending church anywhere on tonight to study the word of God, here is an opportunity. This is your opportunity, praise God, to study with me. Praise God. Book of Ephesians. Uh, turn in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. And uh, we're going to look once again at that sixth chapter. This is part two. Part two in this study. And um, praise God, we Encourage you, as always, to get your pencils, paper, tablets, uh, notebooks, or whatever you need. Praise God to jot down the scriptures and praise God later on have them as a reference that you can go back and, you know, proofread. Right? Praise God. Don't take my word for what thus saith the Lord. I think we've done a little too much of that already. We've trusted these ministers and Praise God, they have really uh, taken us through the ringer. Many people uh, have fallen hook, line, and sinker for the lies that they have told over and over again. So now, that's why I do encourage you to look with us as we look together at the Word of God. Ephesians 6, chapter verse 10. We're looking again at verse number 10 there. And uh, we started this study here uh, on uh, Sunday. And uh, this is part two again. Verse 10 says, Follow my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wild wiles of the devil. And verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, wherefore, uh, the apostle says, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand, and uh, in the evil days, that is, be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all, to stand. That's Paul's word to the church, by way of inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, giving instructions as to how we are to deal with the enemy that we're facing each and every day. So now let's bow here with, for, for a word of prayer before we get into the scriptures here. Father bless you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Once again, you're giving me to come and share your word today. Now, Lord, I speak, pray that you'll speak through me. For, Lord, I do realize, as always, Father, that it's not by might, not by power, but it is by your spirit. I pray you go before me, Father. Break up the fallow ground, prepare the hearts to hear your word today. And Father, we pray they may bring forth fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold, and bring you glory and praise through their lives. So now be mindful to give you all the praise, Lord. I give you all the glory. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and praise God. Now, Paul says in verse 10 there, Ephesians 6, verse 10, be strong, brethren, be strong in the Lord. And that's going to be our subject once again. Uh, praise God. Uh, be strong in the Lord uh, is what Paul admonished the believers uh, to be. Amen. Praise God. And it's part two again now. But I do encourage you to always go back, listen to part one before you undertake this part two. 
uh, you're gonna you're gonna be shortchanged if you don't uh, uh, get the whole message that God has given me to give to you. So this uh, is part uh, this is part two. But again, I encourage you to go back and listen to part one. Now, in part one, we praise God. We endeavor to awaken uh, the believers in Christ to the dangers that we are we are definitely facing today. Amen. And uh, praise God. Uh, also, how uh, it's important. We try to help you to understand how important it is that we have the assurance that we are in Christ. In Christ. That's important now. In Christ. Uh, in the Lord, that is. It's important that we have that blessed assurance of our position in Christ. Otherwise, now, we uh, cannot be strong is impossible. And that's what Christ says we are to be strong. But you can't be strong if you're not in Christ and Christ is not in you. It's impossible. It's impossible. Amen. But now the battle we are fighting today as believers now is a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. And only those who are born again of the spirit of God, praise God, only those that are born again are even aware that there is such a thing as a spiritual battle taking place. You have to be born again. Praise God. Amen. And again, there, 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 there were two points that, um, that, uh, I tried to place great emphasis upon in our first message. Uh, and that is, uh, that we have a, praise God, a very important role. I tried to help us understand that we have a role to play in this spiritual battle. Amen. But now again, as the prophet Amos, Amos said in uh, Amos 6, 1, Amos said, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. So now we must never uh, 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 sit back and relax as though uh, there's nothing for us to do. We're never to go to sleep. During this battle that we're in, is it is a 24-7 battle for the believer. Now, if you're not a uh, believer, then you, uh, like I say, you're not even aware that there's such a thing as a battle going on. And you're not the enemy of the devil because you are working with the devil if you don't to know the Lord. And uh, you may not believe that. You may not know that. But it's a fact. It's an either or. You either in the Lord. The Lord is either in you. You either save or you unsave. Or you are working for the devil. There is no in between here. So now Paul says we're not to sleep. Amen. In other words, there's something for us to do here uh, as we fight this battle. Uh, while at the same time, uh, never forgetting that uh, the battle is the Lord. Yes, we have a role to play. No doubt. But the battle is the Lord. Don't ever forget that, believers. We want to keep that in mind uh, because uh, this foe that we're fighting, uh, he, we're no match for him by ourselves. So the battle is the Lord, although there is a role and a part for each and every believer to play in this great fight of faith. Amen. But now, after Paul encouraged the believers to be strong in the Lord, and to trust in the power of his might now. Then he goes on to tell us that there is a dress code. There's a dress code. There is a uniform requirement for those who are called by God to salvation or those who have been drafted huh, into the army of the Lord. Praise God to fight this great spiritual battle. There are what? There's a uniform. There's a dress code there that we must, uh, uh, you know, we, we must, uh, uh, attend to. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when I went into service, uh, they stripped us out of our civics, our civic clothes and, and put us on uniforms. God has a uniform for those of us who are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And that uniform is called a whole armor, the whole armor of God. That's what it's called, huh? It's called the whole armor of God because it comes from God. It comes from God. There's no other place. You can be uniformed and uh, other than from heaven itself. It comes from God. Christ gives us this armor. Amen. He gives it to us. All 
every child of God, every born again believer, and I do say born again. Now, you don't hear much of that in church today. It's been omitted, but now you can go to church until the cows begin to crow. Uh, but if you ain't born again, then you're not going to go to heaven. And that's what you don't hear much today, but I love you. That's why I tell you the truth. And uh, like I say, I, 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 I'm not trying to get any money out of your pocket or any favor from you or anything. I so saw I can tell you the truth and nothing but the truth, huh? Christ gives His children, every one of us, the whole armor of God, and it is only praise God. It is only this armor that's gonna help us, huh, to stand firm against the evil schemes of the devil. Praise God. And he has many of those. In these last and evil days we live in, he has many schemes. He's a rascal is what he is. Praise God. But now we need the arm of God. We need the whole arm of God to help us to stand firm, to stand firm as the enemy come against us. Amen. Praise God. But now, again, let us not, let us not, praise God, forget that the army is from heaven. It's from heaven. It is a miraculous gift from heaven. Huh? It's spiritual. It's spiritual. It's not of this world. Praise God. Paul says that it's not of this world. What God gives us to fight the good fight of faith is not of this world. Praise God. I thank God for Jesus that he has given me this great gift. And I'm so aware that I'm in the midst of a battle right now. Amen. But praise God, I'm a winner though. I'm a winner. I'm more than a conqueror. Uh, uh, the victory is mine. Praise God. Go to Second Corinthians. Paul tells us now, he tells us very plainly that uh, we are in a spiritual battle and we have uh, spiritual equipment to deal with uh, this enemy that comes against us. Second Corinthians 10, write it down now. You need to write these scriptures down. You're going to study with me today. Praise God. Study with me now. Go ahead. I'm, I'm trying to give you a little time. I've been told that I move a little fast and, uh, I've been told that all my life, you know, but now second Corinthians 10 and three, 10 and three, Paul says, for though we walk in the flesh, human bodies. Yes, we got them. Yes, but we don't walk. Huh? We got a body, we got a fleshly body, but now we do not war after the flesh. Uh, you can't use anything uh, that you have here that's visible, your flesh, to fight this spiritual battle. Then he says in verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty, he says, through God to the putting down of strongholds, casting out imaginations, and every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Praise God. We got weapons here. We got armor. Praise God to fight this fight of faith. And with this armor, we can pull down strongholds, the devil's strongholds. Praise God. We can pull down every stronghold that the enemy tries to build against us. Oh, I, th I, thank, I thank you, Lord. Great is he that's in us. That he that is in the world, we are more than a conqueror. See, because of Christ's love for us. Now, you, you, you've you got to get a hold of that. It's because he loves us. He ascended back to heaven. And because he knew that uh, he has children down here on earth, he, praise God, loved us so much. He loved us so much that he provided armor for us. He knew that as they hated him, they would hate us also. And, and I know, I know people keep saying, well, I don't know. You know, you keep saying people hate him, but now, I, I got a lot of friends. Well, you don't know the Lord. I tell you that. I tell you one thing. You don't know the Lord if you got a lot of friends in this world, because if you're doing what you're supposed to do, and I'm not talking about them blessing them with the word of God, but if you just saying enough, thank you, Jesus, and enough, praise the Lord. Ain't God good? Oh, you got some enemies. That's all you got to say. You ain't got to go into no theological debate with them. You ain't got to go that far. But it's because of Christ's great love for us that he's provided armor for us, for our protection here. Amen. In his absence, praise God. And it's not just armor, but it's the very best armor. Praise God that we can, uh, we can have to fight this uh, against the evil spirits hmm? that are loose in this world today. And truly, as they hated Christ, they will hate us also. Hmm? That's what Christ said. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised, brothers and sisters. Now, like I say, if, you, uh, if you're a friend of everybody, everybody for your friend and uh, 
Uh, but the Bible says, what? Be well when all men speak well of you. <laughs> uh, you ain't got to try to make them not like you. They are not going to like you if you stand firm on the word of God because they have a spirit in them. They have a spirit in them. They hated Jesus without a cause. They had no valid cause to hate the Lord Jesus Christ, but they hate him anyhow. Why? Because there was a spirit within them that was anti-God, anti-Christ, anti good anti-heaven, anti-everything that's about God. That spirit just in those people. huh? Praise God. But God has given us armor. God gives us armor for our protection. Praise God. Because he knew exactly what we were going to be up against. Go to Isaiah 54. Most of y'all know it by memory, but let's look at it anyhow. And you copy down Isaiah Copy it down, praise God. Isaiah, look at uh, uh, 54 and 17. There she go. No weapon, no weapon, 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. No, no weapon, no. Hmm? Every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness, Christ said, is from me. Our righteousness is from Christ. Amen. We have his righteousness. We are, have none of our own. Hmm? Praise God. It's by faith. We got his righteousness. Amen. But now, our armor, again, it was purchased by Christ. When he shed his blood upon that old rugged cross, he purchased our righteousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And again, praise God, he gave us weapons to fight the good fight of faith. Weapons which consist of individual or uh, spiritual pieces of armor. Individuals, which we'll look at as we go along. Huh? Praise God. But he's given us as a result of his dying on the cross for our sins. He gave gifts unto men, the Bible says. He ascended back to heaven and he gave gifts unto men. Praise God. Oh, this armor Praise God for our protection. The sheep, praise God, needs some protection. Amen. Armor, uh, he's given us armor such as truth. Oh, praise God. We're going we're gonna to look at it. Righteousness, the Bible said. We have armor called peace huh? and faith and hope. Praise God. See, and, and, and all these attributes, they're found in Christ. They're found in Christ. And they are, by way of our faith and trust in Christ, they are imparted. To every one of us, unbelievers, you didn't work for it. You don't have to work for it. Uh, we just trust in the Lord and praise God. He outfit us. He gives us, praise God, our uniforms, our armor, praise God, the whole armor of God to fight this spiritual battle. He, he hadn't left us alone. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. Oh, I'm going to send you a comforter back here. Oh, praise God for Jesus. The Lord is good. And I'm so thankful, praise God, that I'm saved today. I'm thankful, Lord, that the Lord has given me the gift of salvation. And I, I, I want you to know I didn't earn this. Uh, I, 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 it wasn't that I was good. No, no, it's just the opposite of that. But now God chooses whom he want to choose. God gives his gift to whom he want to give it to. And I'm just blessed that God has chosen me. And I hope he's chosen you. Praise God. I hope he's chosen you. But now all these attributes now that God has given us with, within the armor, truth and righteousness and peace and faith and hope and the word of God, all these attributes that he has given us, he has put within us, imparted to us. Amen. Meaning uh, that basically what we've done when we put on the armor, the whole armor of God, we're putting on Christ. We're putting on Christ. And Paul said that over and over and over in his letters. Look at, just look at one, though, Romans 13. We're putting on Christ, putting on the armor. The whole armor of God is putting on Christ. Everything is about Christ. It's all about Christ. Romans 13, 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Romans 13, 14. You write it down. Write it down. We put him on. We put on Christ. When you put on the armor, you're putting on Christ. When you put on the attributes, uh, you're putting on Christ. Everything is about Christ. It's Christ. It's Christ. It's Christ. In you, the hope of glory. Amen. But now, if we have truly believed in Christ, 
if we have truly now believed in Christ and we're saved. Now, if you can say you're saved, all of these attributes, again, that are in Christ will also uh, in different measures be found in his children. And I say different measures because even though we all are equally given a measure at salvation, but some of us have grown some of us have grown. So now uh, some of us, our measure of faith is a little bit different than others. The peace that I have is probably different from another believer. Amen. But we began with the measure, the same measure. But now uh, as we've grown, hopefully we've grown, then uh, we have grown in these attributes also. Amen. Praise God. Now, but the point is here that, 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 that I'm trying to make here is that we will need all of these spiritual attributes, hmm? which is the full armor, the whole armor of God. We're going to need all of them in order to wage warfare. Huh? With a spiritual devil and his spiritual demons. Hmm? We need spiritual weapons. Hmm? Praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, in order to fight the fight, the great fight of faith. Look at Ephesians 6 again. And, uh, 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 our text again, 11 and 12. In 11 and 12, Paul, he identifies our enemy there again. He identifies our enemies. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hmm? Uh, uh, but now he identifies the enemy as the devil and his demonic friends. Hmm? See, we all, most of us are familiar with the world that we live in, but there's another world within this world. There's a spiritual world. God is a spirit. Hmm? There's a spiritual world. Praise God. And uh, 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 the devil, the enemy of the devil and his demonic friends, praise God, they are all over the world. Mm? He's the prince of the power of the air. He's all over the place. Amen? With his helpers. Uh, and, and, and they come against us with wiles, schemes, schemes, which mean that the old devil and his demonic brothers, and his, they're crafty and they're very deceitful. Yes, they are very deceitful. And, and he often disguises himself as an angel of light. Mm, an angel of light. Mm. That's why most of us have been deceived in our churches today. Mm -hmm. He has come as an angel of light and put himself in positions of authority in our congregations. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is a method which he uses very often today, right today. Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians. In your Bible again, 2 Corinthians. And you look with me now and you copy these scriptures down. I know you're not used to looking at a lot of scriptures. I know that most of all these churches today, he might start out with one scripture, then he goes into the uh, goes into the um, self-help and self-motivational rant. That's what they usually go into. But now you look with me now, 2 Corinthians 11 and look at 13. 2 Corinthians 11 and 13, uh, for such are false apostles, 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, 13, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. We got a lot of deceitful workers in the church today. Hmm? That's right. And he says in 14, and no marvel for Satan himself is transforming into an angel of light. The devil himself, through his demonic power, uh, and, the, and then he said, look at 15, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also mm, be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Amen. They're working today for the monetary benefits, the fame, the recognition, the power over ignorant people. But now their end is going to be different. It's going to be according to their works. But what Paul is saying very plainly here, that there are uh, ministers in our poor pit, many of them, many of them. There are more angels of light ministers in our poor pit than there are truly called from God ministers today. You can take that to the bank. Amen. Take that to the bank. But my heart goes out. My heart really truly goes out to the many people that are uh, playing church uh, each and every uh, Sunday, Wednesday, uh, and every day, just playing church and telling folks, I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm a Christian. You know, Hollywood is full of people talking about, yes, I'm a Christian. But look what they do. Look what they like. Look how they live. Look how they dress. Huh? Look how they, look how they dress. Huh? Praise God. They lack that whole armor of God. Playing church. They, they lack the whole armor 
of God. And, and they become easy prey. Many of our people in church today, they are easy prey targets for the many uh, 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 false preachers and that comes as angels of light. They are easy prey for these false preachers that fill our poor pits today. Hmm? And many people, they've been led. They've been led farther and farther away from the truth. That's right. Farther and farther away into darkness. Huh? Farther and farther away from the light. That's what's happening in our churches today. Go to Matthew 7, 15. Come on, stay with me now. Matthew 7, 15, 7 and 15. You write it down if you can't uh, find them real fast. I, I got the Bible here on the screen here so I can stroll, kind of scroll down a little bit here and I've gotten used to it now. Matthew 7, 15. Uh, the Lord said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. Hmm? They are eating the sheep alive. They are leading the sheep to hell. That's what the Bible says here. Again, now, the devil, he filled our poor pits. Our poor pits, uh, poor pits are filled up with preachers who wear sheep clothing. Yes. And they preach. A little bit of the gospel. They're basically, what they'll do, they'll get up and they'll take a text. They'll read something out of the Bible. And that's that's the end of that. Then they go into the emotional thing. Hmm? In other words, they'll preach just, just, just a little bit of the Bible starting off. But then they go into a whole lot of preaching on prosperity gospel and positive thinking type gospel, as well as motivational speeches and emotional, uh, flesh-stirring, non-gospel messages. Or oh, they go into that rant then, you know. And this is what the people are used to. Oh, they love it. They love it. They love it. Well, that's all they <laughs> they were raised up on it. They don't know what real food is all about. Huh? Praise God. They don't know what real food tastes like because they hadn't been fed the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And people often tell me, you know, uh, you know, uh, your, your message was good, but, you know, y'all give too many scriptures. Oh, you see, they're not used to it. They're not used to reading. They don't read at home. They don't hear nothing in church. So they kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to hold them for over 10 minutes if you're going to deal with all scriptures. Mm? You've got to be, praise God, grown up in the Lord. Praise God to sit for a good hour or so and just go through the word of God. And let God feed you. Amen. Praise God. But now listen again how Paul described today's uh, preachers that are in these sheep clothing while uh, actually, they are raven, ravenous wolves is what he called them. Look at 1 Timothy 4.1. He says, now, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly uh, that in the latter times, some, some of these preachers now, these, these gigolo preachers here, some shall depart from the faith and giving heed to seducing spirits, that's the devil, uh, and doctrines of devils, that's what they're preaching, and demons, hmm? Prosperity and all that stuff. There is not. That's that's not. That's not. That's not the message, huh? Praise God. Our prosperity is spiritual. Huh? Our prosperity is spiritual. Praise God. Yes, we enjoy some material things, but now the emphasis should not be placed on material things. Not if we're true believers, huh? But Paul said behind most of our preachers today, uh, the ruler of the darkness of this world is manipulating them. Praise God, he got them on a string and he's manipulating them. And I wholeheartedly believe it. I believe this is my whole heart. I think this is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They are being manipulated. And because of the ignorance of the people that sat there and listened to that, and you don't know the word of God, then what else? Huh? But now, again, praise God, to make you, as born again believers, we must, praise God, as born again believers, we must suit up. Got to put on the whole arm of God. You got to you got to put on your uniform in order to fight the good fight of faith. Why? Because we are facing what principalities. We're facing powers. We're facing rulers and a host of God haters that are loosed here on the earth. I'm talking about demons, and the demons have gotten into the people. That spirit is in these people, and they don't want to hear the word of God. Huh? They get mad if you just if you pass them and you're humming or uh, singing some kind of gospel song. They'll look at you like, you know, what, what's wrong? What's up with him? You know, praise God, they're not accustomed to it and they don't like it. 
They don't like it at all. Praise God. But I thank God. I thank God that uh, the Lord, uh, the, is the whole armor uh, that we put on is the whole armor that we get from Christ in his many attributes. Hmm? Praise God. That's, that's right. Huh? The whole armor is Christ. Everything is Christ. Everything is Christ huh? and his attributes that we ought to depend upon. Depend upon. Amen. It is Christ in us, which makes us what? It makes us overcomer. It makes us more than a conqueror. Praise God. Right now, not later on, not by and by, after a while, over yonder, over there. Now, I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Yes, I am. I'm blessed. Huh? Look at 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Come on, look with me now. I'm, all, I'm almost there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Look at 1 John 4. Uh, Jesus, what did Jesus say to the brother? The brother went to sleep on Christ, didn't he? And Christ said, brothers, wake up. Can y'all watch? Can you watch with me one hour? Uh, just one hour. Oh, boy. Old flesh. Uh, spirit is willing, Christ said. Your spirit is willing to hear me, but your flesh is weak. And some of you just can't. You can't. Your attention span is just not there, isn't it? Go to 1 John 4, 4. Come on, stay with me now. 1 John 4, 4. And look what the, uh, John says here, Apostle John. Ye are of God, little children. And ye have overcome them. Some of these old principalities and power. Because what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. I got the greater one in me. Praise God. He's in me. He's in me. Praise God. First John 2, 16. We all know that one. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. He says. Then they are not of the Father. But. They are all of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And that's what the preachers are teaching people today in churches. Huh? Lust for things. Oh, God's got a blessing for you. And they ain't talking about no spiritual blessing. They're talking about material things. Huh? Lust of the flesh. That's what they're teaching. Lust of the eyes. Hmm? Pride of life is what they've been taught. That's the devil's tools there. But now our Lord, praise God and our Savior, he's greater than the devil. He's greater than all of the demons in the whole wide world. Praise God. And every true born again believer has overcome the evil one. We have overcome the evil one. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I am. Yes, you are. If you are born again of the Spirit of God, you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord. And although, I praise God, although our adversary is powerful, yes, he's powerful. Don't underestimate, don't underestimate his power. He's powerful, he's wicked, and he has jurisdiction seemingly throughout the whole world. And he's determined to destroy all those whom Christ loves. Yes, he's determined. And uh, the ones that he loved and that he gave his life on Calvary for, he wants to destroy us. Hmm? Amen. He wants to destroy us. But thank God that we're more than conquerors today. I, I'm above. I'm not beneath. Praise God. I am a child of God. Praise God. He wants to destroy us, but he, he cannot. He has failed and he will fail. He has and he keep on. He will because greater is he that is in us. Praise God. Than he that is in the world. Praise God. And, and although, although it seems, now, I'm talking about it seems uh, that the demons control this world. It seems that wars everywhere. We got wars. That look, uh, look around you. Look at your news. There's wars everywhere. Fighting everywhere. People killing everywhere you look. There is confusion. It seems like the demons are in control. It seems that Satan has just took over, but now he's not all powerful, though. I want you to know that. The devil is not all powerful. His influence is spread all across this world. We can see that every day from the White House to the church house, huh? from the schoolhouse to your house. Huh? Your house. Not my house, but your house may be. Not my house. Amen. I hope you can say not my house either. Praise God. He has no influence here. Uh, my family, we don't want a card when it comes to the Lord and his word. Yes, we are on one accord. Now you face it, brothers. Brothers and sisters, y'all face it now. There is a satanic and an antichrist spirit and an antichrist mindset in the world today. There is. Hmm? Yes, sir. But now, if you have been called into the army of the Lord, mm, if you've been called mm, to the army of the Lord, it has been issued your armor. 
Praise God. Every child of God got his armor. If you've been issued your armor, then Satan and his demons may try to possess, to molest, uh, to harass you. But thanks be to God and through Jesus Christ, they can never possess us. Oh, God, he may try to molest us, but he can't possess us. Mm, that's right. Yes, they may attack us. Yes, externally. Yes. Yes, they may. God may allow them, but they cannot touch us internally. Ah, oh, because what? Christ sits on the throne of our hearts, my heart, our heart, and you cannot serve two masters. If Christ is here, then the devil can't sit here anymore. Praise God. He can't sit here anymore. His seed remains in us, John says. And therefore, praise God, we cannot be charged with sin because the seed of Christ lives inside of us. But now, if you're not saved today, if you're not born again of the, of the Spirit of God and become a true believer in Christ. Now, you don't hear this kind of teaching. I know you don't hear this. You don't hear this in your poor pit anymore. But if you're not truly saved and born again, you are a slave. To Satan, yes. Hmm? You're a slave to Satan and his demons. You are. Hmm? Whether you know it or not. I know some of you probably say, oh, not me. But now you either are. You're one or the other. You're either saved or you're in the grasp and the arms or in the under the power of the devil and his demons this very moment. Whether you believe it or not. Hmm? But now, as I close this part two, now, and like I say, this is just part two, and we're probably going to go as far as Lord's will now, God's will, we're probably going to go as, as far as at least part five or six in this in this study here. So I want you to stay with me. And remember what, what the purpose of our armor is now. Put on the whole armor of God. Remember now, what is the purpose of our armor? Ephesians 6, 13 says, we are to take up the whole armor of of God. What, for what purpose? Huh? That we may be able to withstand. Stand. Oh, something is coming against us. Stand in the evil day. In the evil day, he said. And having done all to stand. We got to stand. That means that there's a wind blowing against us. There's an evil coming against us. But now three times in our text that we read in Ephesians here, three times, uh, Paul encouraged the believers to stand firm. Three times. Hmm? Meaning that we must recognize the imminent danger that we are facing today. Oh, yes. Hmm? As people of God, we're facing, oh boy, on every hand. We're facing danger on every hand. We, we, we are soldiers in, in, in a battle against supernatural beings. Hmm? Beings that are not of this world. That's what we did with. But now he said we are to stand firm. Stand firm. When you're done all still stand. Stand firm means that, 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 that we are to reject anything and anyone who comes against the truth. Mm. Yes, as born again believers, we must proclaim the truth. We must defend the truth. Yes. Mm. Our resolve must be for God I live and for God I will die. Do you have that resolve in your heart today? Praise God. And remember, our armor helps us to stand firm against all oppositions, every opposition, all the enemies, every situation. It helps us. Our armor helps us to hold our ground, helps us to resist and to refuse the devil's temptations, his enticements, his attacks. It helps us to armor. You got to get your uniform. You got to arm up. Amen. Hmm? Now, now God's will. We will in the next couple of weeks, as I said, next few weeks, we're going to look at each piece of our armor here. That is uh, in, in, in separate message. Each piece. I'm going to take them individually. What are they? Verse 14. Number one, truth. You got to have a foundation of truth. Oh, God, are you going to stand? Righteousness is in that verse 14. Huh? Verse 14, you got righteousness in Ephesians 6, 14. Then you got peace, verse 15. Oh, you got to have the peace that pass all understand. Then they got to have faith. Oh, verse 16. 17 talks about the heaven of salvation. You got to know that you know that you know that you know. Don't be come on, forget that hope I'm saved stuff. If you hope and you don't know. You got to know. Then you got to have the word of God running through you like a, a fountain of water 24-7. Oh, boy. Then prayer. All prayer. All say, oh, God. You got to have all these things. But all these attributes, 
They're found in Christ. Hmm? And they are imparted to every believer when we put our trust in the Lord. Yes, he gives them to us. Hmm? And as we grow, we build on them. We build on them where, praise God, the enemy recognized right off the bat that we are no immature believers, but we are soldiers. Hmm? Green beret spiritual soldiers who know the word of God, who have the peace of God, who know that we are righteous in God's sight, who knows, praise God, that uh, it is uh, the faith of God that we have in our hearts. See, all the attributes, they're found in Christ. So now, let this be, let this be your song, whoever you are. If you're listening to me right, let this be your song, whoever you are right now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, let this be your song. It's a song that we sang in church many years ago. Don't sing it too much today. A lot of the songs uh, have been just deleted, but we sang a song many years ago in church, and it went something like, Jesus is my Savior, and I shall not be moved. Can you stand? And when you're done all, praise God, can you still stand? Hmm? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, I bless you. I thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity you've given me, Lord, to share your word. Now, Lord, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit might move upon the hearts of those whom you bring to hear this word today. Those whom you sermon to hear this word. Now, Lord, I pray that they might receive your word, they might grow, and Lord, be a soldier in the army of the Lord and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And Father, I'd be mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. It is in Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank you, Lord. Now, if you receive this word today, Praise God. As always, I'll ask you to pray for me. Pray for me. I don't need, don't need you to send me no money. I don't need nothing like that. Praise God. I just need you to pray for me that God will speak through me, continue to speak through me and help me to be a conduit uh, of his power, of his word to round up the sheep, uh, the lost sheep that the Lord is bringing into the fold. You, you help me by praying for me. Then share Share this word now. Like, like I say all the time, we can't all preach. We can't all teach. But now, many of you can share this word. If you believe that this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I've showed you scriptures, hmm, would you share this word with somebody? And subscribe. Praise God. Subscribe. So that when I come again, praise God, I'll bring you another word. Another word directly from the Lord's heart to my heart, and hopefully to your heart. Amen. And then on the Lord's will now, the Lord's will, the Lord's will on Sunday, unless he give me to go before that. On Sunday, we're going to bring you part three. Part three. Amen. And we're going to look at the first piece of armor in details. We're going to look at it in detail. The first piece of armor that we must put on. When you go to the window to get your uniforms, praise God, that's what we went to a window when I was in the Air Force. We went to a window and they had a, a, a uniform stacked up there for each person. When you go to God's window to get your uniform, to get your armor, praise God, the first, the first, the very first armor, praise God, that God gives us is truth. Hallelujah, truth. you got to know the truth. Truth will set you free. It'll help us to fight this good fight of faith. So we're going to look at truth, God's will, on Sunday. Until that time, praise God. May God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer today. Amen and thank you, Lord.